Most people with a mental illness in England are treated in primary care, yet mental illness is unrecognised in two-thirds of those attending. National guidance for common mental health problems advocates that healthcare professionals working in primary care have a responsibility to identify common mental health problems, assess the severity, provide relevant information and consider any special needs. They should also offer the correct treatment options for those with mild to moderate problems and make an appropriate referral for those who have a moderate to severe common mental health problem. The National Confidential Inquiry assert there should be a mechanism in place to ensure that people who present with major physical health issues are addressed and monitored for depression and risk of suicide. This is because this cohort are two to three times more likely to have depression than those with good physical health. Often, people do not recognise they have a mental health problem and they may present with a physical health problem such as increased tiredness, bowel problems, difficulties with sleep, headaches or change in appetite. Report an increase in smoking, alcohol or drug consumption. Attend to discuss a problem with their long-term condition without realising the cause is psychological. For example, a person with diabetes may attend because their blood glucose readings are elevated, which may be because they've stopped eating healthily and exercising because they are feeling low. To ascertain whether someone has depression or anxiety, there are screening questions available. Two for depression, two for anxiety and a help question. The person simply answers yes or no. An answer of no to the first four questions indicates that the person is unlikely to have depression or anxiety. The help question improves the specificity of diagnosis. This means if a person answers yes to one of the screening questions and then declines help, this is usually because they do not have an underlying depression or anxiety. They should be given the option of coming back to see a healthcare professional should they change their mind. An answer of yes to any of the questions should trigger a more detailed assessment using the patient health questionnaire PHQ-9 and Generalised Anxiety Disorder Assessment, GAD-7. If a person attends and reports they are feeling down, depressed or anxious, they can be assessed with the PHQ-9 and GAD-7, i.e. there is no need to use the screening questions. The healthcare professional should use the consultation time to listen to patients. Listening is often not regarded as an intervention, but is valued by patients. The listening should be done actively, using eye contact, nodding and open gestures. What is being said should be paraphrased to ensure mutual understanding, and empathetic comment should be offered to encourage hope. For example, I understand how you are feeling. There are things we can do to help you. Or... I know everything may feel impossible at this present moment, but I've seen people in a similar situation to yourself, and they have got better. Investigations are not indicated routinely when a person presents with depression, but may be necessary to exclude other causes of symptoms. In someone with predominant fatigue, these blood tests are helpful. Full blood count to exclude anemia. Thyroid function test to exclude hypothyroidism. Vitamin D to exclude deficiency. There are some drugs which may cause depressed mood. Though this is uncommon, these include centrally acting antihypertensives, for example, methyl dopa, lipid soluble beta blockers, for example, propranolol, benzodiazepines, or other central nervous system depressants, opioid analgesics. The Patient Health Questionnaire is a tool to measure the severity of depression which has been validated for use in primary care. It's usually referred to as the PHQ-9. It comprises nine questions which are designed to assess the person's mood over the last two weeks. For each of the nine test criteria, 
There are four possible answers which are scored. Not at all equals zero points. Several days equals one point. More than half the days equals two points. Nearly every day equals three points. The PHQ-9 scores are added up and the depression severity is graded based on this. Zero to four, none. Five to nine, mild. 10 to 14, moderate. 15 to 19, moderately severe. 20 to 27, severe. Anxiety is measured using the Generalized Anxiety Disorder Assessment, which is validated for primary care and referred to as the GAD-7. Each question on the GAD-7 is scored between 0 and 3 in the same way as the PHQ-9. The GAD-7 scores are added up and the anxiety severity is graded based on this. 1 to 9, mild anxiety. 10 to 14, moderate. 15 to 21 is severe. Both the PHQ-9 and the GAD-7 provide only probable diagnosis. Therefore, further clinical evaluation is required. They can be used at regular intervals to monitor progress. Studying the PHQ-9 and the GAD-7 questions for those patients who score 2 or 3 per question guides the practitioner to choose the most appropriate therapy. For example, a high score on the PHQ-9 question 7, having trouble concentrating, could be treated with the use of worrying time and or behavioural activation. There are more details about this in the accompanying handout. Mental health and well-being are influenced not only by a person's individual attributes but also by the social circumstances in which they find themselves and the environment in which they live. It's important to consider biological, psychological and social factors such as the quality of their relationships, any support from their family, friends, colleagues or others, their living conditions, employment issues and alcohol or substance misuse. To recap, healthcare professionals working in primary care have a responsibility to identify common mental health problems, assess the severity, provide relevant information and offer the correct treatment options. Please pause the film here for discussion and refer to the facilitator's notes for guidance.